Hello there and welcome back to Deep Sky Shed. Today we're going to be talking about how to take flats with a Dwarf 2 and explaining to you why you'd want to. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, and here we have a, a basic raw stack. It's, uh, it's not been processed, it was stacked in Cyril. And as you can see, it exhibits a, a really quite nasty gradient on the left hand side. Now the gradient has been caused by uh, an aberration of the optical system. It's, to be quite honest, not unusual with telescopes, even really expensive telescopes can have problems like this. But it's something that needs to be dealt with, and that's what the purpose of flats is. So I'm now going to show you another image. Uh, this is exactly the same image, and it has been processed in exactly the same way. The only difference is that this image was processed with flats. And as you can see, the flats have pretty much completely removed the gradient. So I'm now going to show you exactly what the process was to create the flats that were used to remove the gradient from this image. First up, here's a checklist of the items we're going to require. Number one, your Dwarf 2 with the filter holder attached and no filters fitted. Number two, a tablet or a phone to act as a flat panel. Number three, pieces of frosted plastic or tracing paper or even normal white paper. Number four, a computer with Cyril installed. Number five, Dwarf 2 to be connected to a computer via USB in MTP mode or another method that allows the file system to be accessible. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to create a Cyril project. So here's my folder, M81, and inside that I've got darks, flats, and lights. Uh, I'm going to leave out biases. Uh, I will provide a, a special script, actually, that you can add to Cyril, so that you don't need to use biases. So I've already got my uh, dark frames uh, ready to go, and some light frames. Next thing I'm going to do is to open up Cyril itself. Then we're going to set the home directory. And that's it. And now Cyril is, is configured and we're ready to go. So the next thing we've got to do is to configure the tablet to be a flat panel. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is to find some sort of program that allows you to have a, a blank white page. So pretty much any kind of notepad style app would, would probably work for, for that kind of purpose. Uh, I'm going to use an app that I've installed, but you don't have to use this one. Actually, maybe this even is slightly overcomplicated, but uh, it seems to work quite well for what I wanted to do. Uh, if I can find it somewhere here, here we are. It's called Tracing Paper. So we'll just start it up. I'm going to use text. I don't actually want any text, so. I'm just going to delete the text and put a space in, submit. And then I just change the background and that gives me basically a kind of a, a white gray background. Uh, what I can then do is to go into the brightness setting on the tablet and I can turn the brightness right down. So I'm going to sort of not quite go fully off, but but probably to about 10% brightness, something like that. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, uh, that'll do. Uh, with this app, I can actually press this little button that locks it. That's it. Now the, um, the tablet is ready to be used uh, as a flat panel. Next, uh, I'm going to show you how to use this the um, tablet 
with the dwarf to um, and how to position it. Okay, so here I am at the dwarf two, uh, and now I'm going to uh, position this tablet. As you can see, I've got the the, the dwarf's lens is pointing almost um, horizontally, but just pointing slightly upwards. And I'm going to just rest gently rest the tablet against the dwarf like this. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do, firstly to protect the tablet, but also just to reduce the light level. I'm going to use these bits of um, sort of semi-transparent plastic just over the just over the lenses like so. Uh, you might have to experiment with how many pieces you will need at the end of the day, but it, it should all become a bit more obvious as we go through this. The next thing I'm going to do is just place the dwarf against the lens. And I'm going to just adjust the position manually of, of the lens, just rotate it until this just drops. I feel it drop into place and it's flat. So we just want to make sure the whole thing is flat like so. And that's it now. We're ready to start shooting. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to activate the Dwarf 2. And then we'll move on to the Dwarf Lab app on my phone. Uh, we'll get rid of the wide angle view, get that out of the way. Select the Astro mode. There we go. Now I'm going to go in. Um, I'm going to do this uh, for two by two. Uh, it, when you do this, you do need to do a separate flats for one by one and two by two, or that's 4K or 2K. So I'm going to do 2K ones anyway at the moment. So that's set to 2K. Then we're going to try a shutter speed of two seconds. This is probably, you know, if you've got the tablet, as, as dim as I have, this is probably a reasonable starting value. But we're going to set it for about two seconds. I'm going to set the gain uh, to about 40. 40, there it is. And we're going to set the uh, infrared to cut. That's it. I'll just make sure that's still there. Yes, so that's all good. Uh, then we're going to shoot. Now we keep going till we've got about 20, uh, 20 to 25 frames. Um, that's probably a reasonable number uh, for, for creating flat frames. There we go. Okay, we'll go live again. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, switch back to my desktop. And we can uh, just have a look at how we're going to check out uh, what we've just shot. So here I am back at my desktop. Uh, I've got two windows open. Uh, the Dwarf 2 window is on the right hand side. And the Cyril um, directory uh, is on the left hand side. So this is actually the Cyril Flats directory. So all I'm going to do now is to drag uh, the first of these uh, flat files across into the Cyril Flats directory. We click open, we click on flats, double click on flats, click on the file we've just copied across. 
we open that we can just click down here on histogram and have a quick look and that's a stretched version of uh, flat frames right click on it click on statistics and we look at this top figure here which is mean and what we're looking for is a mean figure of between 1500 and 1800 ADUs if we can achieve that then we should have a well exposed flat frame so that's what we need to achieve all you really then got to do is to just repeat the process so if for example uh, the figure is too low then you would increase your exposure and maybe increase your gain if the figure is too high you would reduce your exposure and maybe reduce your gain uh, the main thing to bear in mind is you cannot in a two by two bin you cannot go below one second exposure if you find that you're at zero gain and at one second exposure you're probably going to need to use some additional pieces of paper or something between uh, the dwarf two and the tablet just to dim the light down a little bit more anyway that's the basic method for taking flats with the dwarf two smart telescope if you're using a Mac or you have trouble accessing the file system with MTP mode, you could, of course, uh, take several exposures of different of different values. So you could maybe start at zero gain and then at 10, 20, 30. So you, you could do a whole um, series of flats at different values. You could also uh, be increasing uh, the exposure or decreasing the exposure as well. Uh, and then you could remove the SD card, take that across to your computer and check each set of exposures in Cyril and find out which was the correct one for, for what you needed. Um, but once you've done it, you really shouldn't have to do it again very often, if at all, actually. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and um, I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.